Hello everybody and welcome to Andrew Broussard Watercolors. Today we're going to do a fast and loose watercolor painting. In front of me I have a quarter sheet of Stonehenge Aqua and I am saturating it with water. This is the Ron Ranson Hake brush. I think any old Hake brush would do for this part, just getting the paper nice and wet. And then the actual painting process, I prefer an actual Ron Ranson Hake brush. Now, the reason I'm repeatedly saying that is um, people have been asking me what type of brush I'm using, what brand, because they're not able to get the, um, the textures that I'm getting. Uh, so this is made by, this says Cheap Joe's Art Stuff, I believe Pro Art. P-R-O-A-R-T-E puts it out as well. I have no affiliation with any of them. But hey, if they see this and want to send me a brush, I would love for that to happen. Uh, but I really love this brush and a lot of people love it. It's really great for a lot of things rather than just applying water. So today I'm going to do a fast and loose Kind of a style I haven't done a video in in a, in a few days. Let me pause the film for a second. All right, so literally as I was wetting the paper, I was like, you know what? Let me freshen up the palette. I want to do the Venetian red sap green combination. These are both Da Vinci brand paints. Um, fairly priced, uh, priced in a good range. Um, if you have sap green and you don't have Venetian red, you can let use light red oxide or red ochre as um, a substitute. I got this combination from Stuart Davies, an oil painter who has a lot of YouTube videos online for a fast and loose tonalist approach. And I kind of adopted it over to uh, watercolors. So I'm going to get myself a nice pile of paint right here. Mixing the two together, we're going to have brownish tones, we're going to have reddish tones, we're going to have greenish tones. And in the fashion of the tonalist oil painters, the modern ones, um, Stuart Davies, um, Dennis Sheehan, um, David Usher, I'm going to kind of just put my landscape in and have fun with it. So it's not equally mixed on my brush. There's different colors laying out, different tonal values coming out, and just having fun. Kind of a let loose paint and see what happens. I'm feeding this into wet and wet, and that's adding to the spontaneity of it. It's allowing me to have brush strokes and lose brush strokes. Now, I'll be honest, these type of tutorials are probably the hardest to follow, even though this technique is the simplest. Because of the spontaneity of it, the randomness, it's very easy to put stuff in and then go in and wipe it out. Just like that. And um, it's really good to kind of just let loose and start building things up. I was wet and wet. I just put that in there. Lifting back up dries that area off. Coming right back in with that hake brush, I'm re-wetting that whole spot. So it's a lot of just back and forth, having fun, adding and subtracting. This kind of approach is very similar to, um, I would say, for me when I was learning charcoal drawing in college. There was a back and forth, additive and subtractive. One hand held the charcoal, the other hand held the eraser. So this may not be so much of a tutorial as it is just me um, 
talking about techniques while I'm putting paint down. A spray brush, a uh, spray bottle would help. Um, something to scrape with is helpful with this technique. Uh, paper towel mm -hmm. is helpful. And if you go through my catalog of videos on YouTube, I like to use this technique experimenting with um, two color combinations. I haven't done a two color combination in a while, so I need to um, get on that. I also need to find some other colors to experiment with. That being said, if you'd like to support this channel, I have a link to Patreon down below um, that helps you know, with art supplies. It's kind of overdue for ordering some um, stuff from either Blick or Jerry's Artorama. Those are the two sites that I mainly go for. Also, um, supporting the channel by uh, simply liking and subscribing would really help out as well. I'm feeling a little lost compositionally, so I'm going to come in and scrape some trees and let my mind kind of wander in that direction for a little while. That's the nice thing about it. If you really don't get something forming, you can wipe it away and start entirely new. Or you can start just working on a different area and see what happens. I don't know why I did that. You got a little, big old tree happen right there. Let's pull this line down. Grab some more pigment. The one thing that is probably a negative about this technique is that you do use a lot of pigment. Um, but it's not like you're going through a tube of it. You probably go through it at a faster pace. But that's one thing um, you should make sure you never like inhibit yourself with. Don't be timid about using your paint experiment and lay it in there and have fun because if you hold back and you're worried about the price that you spent on the paint then you may not fully um, actually get your values worth and that's probably why it's best not to um, start with super expensive paints you don't want to go super cheap scrape in here let something start to form you don't want to go super cheap um, the lowest in my experience that I would go recommendation wise would be um, the Van Gogh brand or the cotton brand um, because of their light fastness and their quality something like student little circle pans that you get for a dollar is probably not the path you want to take. I guess essentially what I'm saying is um, if you start out with, if you're playing around like this with um, Daniel Smith paints, that's, you know, Daniel Smith paints are kind of expensive, great quality, but you may uh, have some reservations about using it in this fashion. I have some Daniel Smith uh, paints that honestly I just haven't used because I um, I feel like I'd be wasting them <laughs> because they're such beautiful paints. Um, my friend uh, Miss Margaret had sent me um, 
a tube of it when I had sent her painting. And I still haven't really played around with it because of that, that fear. Yeah. We'll let this video be kind of like a Bob Ross type video, just, just chatting away. I feel like that's something he could probably say, right? Let's see where we're at. I love the um, the brownish tones that this gets. Let me pause for a second while I put put out some more pigment. All right, one of my um, reservations about this color combination is that whenever dry off takes place, it um, lightens up quite a bit. I found that two different color combinations, there's some that don't have a tonal shift that takes place and some that lighten up. Um, so with this two color, I will often start adding in some blues or a Payne's gray to start getting the darks to help kind of push things tonally in darker directions. Right now I'm just playing and pushing around before I do a dry off. If I put a trunk here, it might break the image up too much. So I'll just kind of break the trunk right here. Whenever I do this, people had asked what I was doing when I was tapping the corners. I'm lifting the binder clip and I'm laying the paper flat. Lifting the binder clip, laying the paper flat. So the paper is absorbing water, it's stretching, it's buckling, and that's uh, flattening it out. Okay, I'm gonna pause, I'm gonna dry it. I want you to watch for how things are gonna shift once I come right back. So, two things. Um, you may have seen right there how it lightened up as it, uh, as I dried it. Um, that's that tonal shift that I was talking about. The second thing was that I got an idea for another video, which I really need to start writing everything down. Um, doing something like this as a kind of a, I think it's pronounced grisaille, an underpainting and then using gouache over it. So kind of just putting this into aspects and then painting with an opaque watercolor on top of it to uh, lay in the colors. Anywho, just somebody remind me of that. Remind me in the comment section about that. Okay, so now when I go in over this dried paint, it's gonna be more crisp. We're not gonna have that uh, wet and wet movement around However, if I really start laying my paint in in this fashion, I create areas of water that I could start uh, doing wet and wet in if I wanted to. This mixture has ultramarine into it. So it's my um, Venetian red and sap green and ultramarine. Just because I feel like the two pigments just don't give me like a deep enough uh, dark for um, for what I want. So you can use this stage just to kind of accentuate what you want and get textures and spots. You can even layer things on top and create a depth. My brush is quite dry right now. 
It's always um, the hardest thing with the hake brush, re-wetting it. You just kind of want to just barely get it into your water. You can probably see a difference right there in how it lays down. Some texture. Yeah, me. Let's see. I'm kind of just playing around. I'm almost thinking that I'm going to want to play with a black or a black wash on this. Let's grab the number four rigger. Number four, so we're not like kind of. playing around too much and also we can lay down a good quantity before we have to pick up more paint. I lost my scraping card and I found it. By the way if you like tonalism, there's a Facebook page, uh, the Tonalist Fellowship, and people share their tonalism works on there. Uh, Stuart Davies, the one that I mentioned earlier, is one of them. If you like hake brushes and fast and loose painting in watercolor, there's the Ron Ranson Disciples. Um, I'm a moderator on that Facebook page. We have a lot of people that use the fast and loose technique. Uh, beginners, intermediate, experts, etc. Um, quite a few people that film YouTube videos on that. Really great community. So um, if you're into that, check us out. Make sure you answer all the questions on the um, when you sign up so that you get added. Some other great Facebook groups, um, watercolor techniques and tips or tips and techniques. A lot of different approaches get shared on there either uh, videos or photographic step-by-steps. Um, that's a, a big community. Uh, Rick S., who I always mention, he has his uh, Facebook friends. I think it's uh, Friends of Rick S. is his Facebook, the one Facebook page. And of course he has tons of YouTube videos, but a lot of people share stuff on his, um, on the Friends Facebook page. And either people will share just, you know, what they did, or they'll share, you know, ideas and whatnot. Here I'm just playing with the rigor to create texture in the illusion of details. There's watercolor sketchers. Another group, um, watercolor landscape painters, another group, a lot of different stuff out there. I really encourage you. I mean, some people shy away from social media. Some people 
I love social media. Some people get addicted to social media. It really, you know, is easy for that to happen. Um, you know, to be sharing, you know, just learning from each other and sharing stuff and whatnot. You know, they're really good communities, good groups of people. But if you're apprehensive about that, you know, I understand. Using this texture for foliage. I'm just relying on that ultramarine blue to kind of get that darker. It'll kind of get like a purple value with the uh, Venetian red. If you follow up the other videos, you know I'll use um, ultramarine blue mixed with uh, light red oxide for a distant purple. Let's take a look, see what we got going on here. Just a lot of texture. A lot of fun. Try not to be repetitive. Let me pause, let me do a dry off. We'll take a look and see what else needs to be done. Okay. Just did the quick dry off. I'm thinking that I'll leave it at this. Um, maybe I'll come back to it in another video. Maybe play around with um, some isolated colors. Maybe some black wash and white wash uh, to accentuate some spots. But as of right now, let me just um, throw my name on it and wrap the video up and put a mat over it to see what it looks like. The video, and I'm filming with my my cell phone telephone. Unfortunately, isn't not picking up some of the greens. It'll push it more on the brown in the video. But ultimately, it's a good stream of consciousness uh, painting technique. You can use it for studies. You can use it for if we push it a little bit further. You can get some really um, nice finished paintings with this technique. Like I said, if we uh, maybe spent another 10 minutes more on it, and maybe we'll come back to that. But as for right now, here's our results. I hope you enjoyed. I'll talk to you all soon. Please uh, like, subscribe, follow, and let me know down in the comments below what you think. Have a great day. Bye.